Welcome everybody who is joining us tonight uh, in the chat. Let us know where you're, you're calling in from, where you're watching us from. I know some of us are at the banquet right now. So welcome to all of you who are at the banquet, but I know some of you are joining online. So say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. We are here to celebrate the SWKKF Reach Awards, the legacy of Sensei Shintani. The Shintani Wadokai Federation aims to be the premier traditional karate foundation and Shinto organization in North America. This can only be accomplished through the work of our highly skilled and dedicated instructors in developing unparalleled character, skill, and pride in our karate students. Our members are the backbone of the SWKKF. Without their spirit of generosity, care, and dedication, the SWKKF would not have survived. It is important to recognize our generous members who have embodied the SWKKF core values of honor, excellence, community, kindness, and humility. Before we begin, it is my honor to introduce the SWKK president, Sensei Dennis LeBay. Sensei Dennis is a ninth Dan and started his karate journey as a student of Sensei Shintani's in 1972 in Welland, Ontario. In June of 1997, Sensei Shintani formed the SWKKF Senate. Sensei Dennis held the position of Secretary General for 10 years. In May of 2000, Sensei Shintani passed away, and Sensei Dennis became the successor as president of the SWKKF. Sensei Dennis continues to train, teach seminars, and attend tournaments and black belt gradings across Canada. Please join me in welcoming Sensei Dennis LeBay. On behalf of the SWKKF Senate, the Tournament Committee, and the REACH Committee, I would like to welcome all of you to the sixth annual REACH Award and Tournament Celebration. I would like to acknowledge all the hard work of our instructors and karateka that were made over the past years, and the excitement for moving back in-person training and the tournaments and the clinics across the country. I'm looking forward to do more of this in the coming years. I would like to thank all the volunteers who worked so hard to pull together the events to the tournament week, celebration, and clinics. We previously mentioned our SWKKF core values of honor, excellence, community, kindness, and humility. This past year has seen the SWKKF build up its community. We have reopened dojos and welcomed new karateka, and so many were, are so glad to be getting back to in-person clinics and tournaments. Speaking of tournaments, I had the pleasure of heading out west for my first tournament this year with Sensei Heather Fittick. What a great welcome by all, and it was an amazing experience to watch so many different clubs and so many different styles compete. Over the past couple of years, we have been profiling black belts, many whom have been direct students from Sensei Shintani. To kick off one of these interviews, we asked Sensei Heather Fittick to share a couple of thoughts and words from the early years with Sensei Shintani. Hello everybody, my name is Todd Chambers and I am here today with Sensei Heather Fiddick. I have been asked to interview you on your recollection and stories from the early years of karate and about your interactions with Sensei Shintani. Sensei Heather Fiddick is a seventh Dan, Senate member for over a decade, president of Karate Alberta, head coach of para karate for Karate Canada, and multi-award winning coach. Thank you for joining the show today, Sensei Heather. Thank you. Another story I remember is Sensei would talk about uh, when he competed in Japan in uh, the early 1960s. He spoke about, again, the brutality of the event, especially since he was not Japanese from Japan. Uh, he was therefore considered gaijin or like a foreigner. He spoke about the resilience needed to take the punches without complaint. And in turn, he reciprocated. Uh, I remember him telling about how he, you know, for every punch that he received that was uh, uh, over-delivered, let's say, uh, he uh, he reciprocated. Uh, I had a similar experience in Japan. Uh, basically, non-Japanese people uh, don't win. That said, things have changed since the turn of the century in the sport of karate. Can you tell us about what it was like to train at one of Sanshi Shintani's clinics? 
Oh my gosh, the clinics were inspirational. Everyone would arrive early, be mulling around. And when Sensei entered the gym without announcement, everything went respectfully silent. It was incredible to watch and to be immersed in such a dynamic environment. So after the bow, we would immediately go into training. There was not really such thing as a warm up. Uh, if he was teaching Kata or Kumite, it didn't matter. There were always lots and lots of repetitions because he would always engage with every single person or every single pair. So you can imagine he he would teach a drill at the front and then he would go through all of the lines and ensure that everybody was doing it uh, correctly. So it was it was a lot of fun at the clinics. What are some attributes that embodied Sensei Shintani? Storyteller. So Sensei Shintani was a great storyteller, but not just a storyteller. He was an active listener. So even as a young adult, uh, he made you feel as though your thoughts were valuable. Uh, so he would listen, but he would always tell his uh, stories with uh, great eagerness. Um, he shared his knowledge and he made you feel like you were just as important as the uh, older or higher ranking members of the organization uh, at the clinics. Uh, another attribute would be honesty. And when I say that, I mean honesty in his words and his actions. They meant the same. Uh, if he said you had a good technique, it was because you actually did. He didn't say it to make you feel good uh, or, or anything like that. If your technique wasn't good, he would provide constructive feedback, but he would never say it was not good. He would just give you constructive feedback. Now, that said, he would also tell you if your uh, technique was good. And this honesty really demonstrated his respect. And then the third one, of course, would be respect. Uh, sensei earned his respect by the respect he gave to others. In this is true respect. It was not demanded or expected. It was earned uh, uh, through um, a reciprocal respect. Can you describe some of the techniques of Sensei Shintani? So Sensei Shintani didn't do all of the formal Wado defined techniques um, that were taught. However, all of the principles were always captured in his teachings. I was an orange or green belt when he introduced uh, Nagayashiuki for blocking off center. Uh, this changed my kumite and it became my favorite technique for Gonosen, block counter. Um, I would draw my opponent in using a, a long, uh, to use a long maigeri and then use Nagayashiuki and the principle of Noru uh, uh, to score on my opponent. Uh, my husband, Darren, and I continued to develop the, the technique both in karate and in Shindo with variations of timing, distancing, and footwork, and then developed a set of key homes that were, were true to uh, Sensei Shintani's um, principles and taught them across Canada over the many years. Uh, don't be worried because you didn't uh, meet Sensei Shintani because really and truly his legacy is transmitted through those who trained with him and then those who in turn uh, train with the next generation and carry it forward. For example, your instructors in the Jarvis and Simcoe area carry that legacy for you. Uh, those of us who did get to train with Sensei uh, Shintani have a tremendous responsibility. We are in positions of influence and it's paramount that we represent a person who Sensei Shintani would have respected, and that would have been that earned respect. Uh, we must make sure that our actions are humble, honest, respectful to all karateka. We can't abuse or take advantage of our positions. Uh, for those coming up the ranks, like yourself, um, remember to seek out people who represent the characteristics that embody Sensei Shintani, and you will always find a good place uh, to be part of the SWKKF. Thank you for this opportunity to do this interview. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, this past weekend, um, it was 23 years since Sensei passed, and he passed the torch to the Senate by choosing the Senate in 1994. And that's almost 30 years ago, and that torch is starting to be passed again, and it will be important for the next generation to embody the attributes that uh, Hanshi Shintani or Sensei Shintani combined 
with today's culture and today's values to ensure that the generations to come have positive experiences. Thank you for this interview today. Uh, Kyle, I wanted to say thank you to you uh, for, for doing this interview and uh, uh, you know, you've been one of these legacy people that uh, will, or one of these people that will create the legacy and carry it forward for Sensation Tani. And uh, so I so appreciate you devoting this time to uh, this interview. Thank you, Sensei Heather, for sharing your thoughts and your insights. Next, we would like to recognize those who have been graded to the top ranks within the SWKKF. On September 10th, September 2022, 10. to the rank of Hachidan, 8th Don. Fancy Ray Poulet from Wellen, Neil Prime from St. Catharines, and Dominic Morbido from Wellen. To the rank of Kudan, ninth Dan. Fancy Peter Tolfi from Wellen, Fancy Roland Day from Weyburn, Saskatchewan. On October 22nd, 22, to the rank of Sichidan, seventh Dan. Fancy Jeff Gervin from Boisevain, Manitoba. On December 3rd, 2022, to the rank of Hachidan, eighth Dan. Sensi Blaine Beamer from Calgary, Alberta, Sensi Brian Chimay from St. Catharines, and Sensi Michelle Besselin from Hearst, Ontario. Congratulations to all. I am so pleased to see many of our senior black belts join us tonight. So in the chat, let us know what is your current rank? You can tell us if you are Caillou, so any of our, our white, yellow, orange, green, blue, brown belts. Are you a Shodan, Nidan, Sandan, Yodan? Go, Dan, higher. Let us know in the chat. Welcome to all of you. I, I love the fact that there are so many different ranks here tonight. Now it's time for the REACH Awards. REACH stands for Recognizing Extraordinary Achievements, Contribution, and Hard Work. Members were invited to nominate others under five categories, leadership, contributor, ambassador, and the Male and Female Athlete of the Year Award. We thank those who took the time to send in their nominations and many thanks to those who sat on the selection committee for going through all of the nominations. Sensei Dennis will present this year's awards recipients uh, for our sixth annual REACH Awards. The Leadership Award recognizes an individual who demonstrates outstanding leadership and effective mentorship within the SWKKF. This year's recipient was described as quiet, resilient, and with a never quite preservant do or do not attribute. This characteristic have pushed those around them to achieve more. He sets the bar at reachable levels for those whom he worked with. He earns respect, not demands it. As one Karatekov wrote, everyone who ever meets this sensei respects this man and looks up to him. And that was before his accident. As soon as he was released from the hospital after, after losing part of his leg, after being struck on his motorcycle, he was back in the dojo in a wheelchair, then on crutches and later with a prosthetic leg. As he, as he has kept on doing it, traveling around Alberta to events, his commitment to karate, Shindo and WKF officiating is appreciated. Please join me in congratulating Sensi Dan Hill on his on this year's Leadership Awards recipient. Congratulations, Sensei Dan, for all that you bring to the SWKKF organization. On our second reflection video is from Sensei Brad Cosby. Sensei Brad is a ninth Dan from Grinsby, Ontario. Sensei Brad started his karate career under Sensei Shintani as a preteen and as a blue belt. He was fortunate enough to be able to travel with Sensei Shintani as he taught around Southern Ontario. He became a Shodan in 1972 at the age of 17. And at that time was the youngest student to be graded to his black belt by Sensei Shintani. Sensei Brad has served for many years on the SWKKF and now acts as an advisor to the Senate. Please join me as we listen to Sensei Brad's reflections on the early years of karate and his time with Sensei Shintani. Hello, everyone. My name's Brad. 
Um, I started karate in 1966 at the Guernsey Arena with uh, Sensei Shintani. When I first started, he wasn't there. He was with, in Japan with his mother. When I started, there was another black belt that was supposed to be teaching, but he did very little. He stood at the back of the class and did nothing. And that was common in those days for black belts to do because we didn't have a lot of black belts. There was mainly Q belts in our club. We probably had 30 Q belts. And the brown belts that were instructing led a brutal class. I know the exercises they put us through, we wouldn't do today there because they were hard on the body. In when Sensei returned, we weren't part of Wadokai yet. We were Nippon Karate Do. So he was always dressed in a black gi, but the difference was he was always on the floor. He wouldn't ask the students to do anything that he didn't do. He could do more different types of push-ups than anybody I've ever seen. And he would do them and he would have us do them as best we could. We did knuckle push-ups. We did bouncing on our knuckle push-ups. We did lift one arm up and that. We did fingertip push-ups where you lifted fingers up until you were on three fingers and did push-ups. He did push-ups on the back of his hands. He It was just phenomenal. And the, even the what we did as far as basics, we did a lot of basics. Basically, he had a routine that he would go through all the time, which even included open hand strikes, which we don't do a whole lot anymore. The kid, a uh, shooto strikes, um, you know, and there wasn't any traditional shooto like we do now. It was all splitting shootos. We practiced heinan katas, not pinans at that time. Um, we did, oh, the techniques were different. I know at that time he had a relationship with Otsuka Sensei, but we hadn't made that transition yet. That was coming. Um, and we had actually on the floor one of Otsuka Sensei's black belts, who was uh, Takeshi Ishiguro, who was a Godan from, uh, from a direct student of Sensei Otsuka's. And he helped out there and make that transition happen. But he, so as it went on, Sensei would change that were black belts. I remember the day it happened, it happened in well in one day where there was a black belt hanging around at the back of the class, just doing his own thing. Well, he got him on the floor sparring with us all. And soon after he left the organization. Um, but that was it since they said, there's no more of that. If you've got your gi on, you're on, you're being part of the class. I don't want to see anybody just hanging around. If you're hurt, then don't put your gi on and stay out of the class. You know, you can still have your input, but stay out of the class. I remember my green belt, or I was green belt going the blue. And he held me back. And he said to me that day, he said, you know, he said, you don't have it yet. One of these days you will. He says, I know that in you. Um, but he says, there's people that will never have it. Because he always talked about fire inside and explo explosiveness. So that's what he would always look. And that was the essence of his karate, was power and explosiveness. So he said, I'm not even going to have to tell you when you have it. You'll just know it. And he was right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, then it came the time where he was starting to come to our house. And because he wanted me, we would put on two men demonstrations. But, of course, he wanted my mom and dad's permission because I was still a kid. Like, I mean, 
We're talking, I was probably 15 at the time. Of course, to get me out of school and take me to these demonstrations that we were putting on at high school. So, yeah. And then we go to these demonstrations and he'd want bricks to break and he'd stop at construction sites and just go in and pick up a couple bricks. He would always have the boards for me to break, but he never had the bricks. And we'd always have to do that. I remember the day that they called to say that he had passed away. I was, I, well, I burst into tears, you know. Um, always a big influence on me and always continue will be. So that's about it. I mean, if you ever, ever have any questions, you can always ask me. Thanks, Cincy Brad, for sharing those stories and those reflections. Our second award of the evening is the Ambassador Award. The award recognizes an individual with strong, positive voice who advocates, raises awareness, or enhances the image of the SWKKF in the greater community. This year's recipient worked hard to build community with a local legion, which enabled them to continue classes during COVID. She has built a positive reputation for karate in the community and is instrumental in her club and in her region. She organizes the tournaments, teaches classes, travels across the province to attend clinics and tournaments, as, and is part of the amazing duo who ensures that we have a harmonizer to keep us all informed. As quoted in her nomination, she manages to give so much to her time to, to this organization. I don't think a day goes by without her going doing something for our club, our regions, or the SWKKF. We have many great people working to make this organization better, and she is one of them. Her efforts to go beyond expectations and impact everyone in our organization. Please join me in congratulating Sensi Alice Pinto Labelle as the Sears of Ambassador Awards recipient. Congratulations, Sensei Alice. All right. The Male and Female Athlete Award recognizes an individual who excels as a karateka through their dedication to training, attending tournaments and clinic opportunities, and achieving excellence as a result of this dedication. This year's female athlete has passion and dedication. She embodied the value of karate, hard work, compassion, and lifelong learning. She is a leader to the karateka and to other showdowns in her club. She trains, participates in clinics and tournaments, and coaches, even provides extra instructions outside of the class to those who may, who may be grading or competing. This female athlete is accomplished comp competitors and is a member of the Shintani team. Please join me and congratulate Sensi Emily Muddle as this year's Female Athlete Award participant. This year's male athlete is dedicated, passionate, and approachable, and many youth members are keen to learn from him. He has demonstrated exceptional dedication to his training and has taken his karate a step further to his success on the tournament circuit and involvement in the, in the Shintani team. He is a positive role model for those training alongside him and encourages other karateka to improve their karate abilities and patiently guides junior karateka, taking the time to understand each student's uniquely, unique abilities and tailoring his instructions to ensure learning pro proceeds in the best way possible. His dedication to both his own training and teaching others demonstrates his exceptional work, ethics, and leadership skills. Please join me in congratulating Sensi Stefan Yordaki as this year's Male Athlete Awards recipient.
Congratulations, Sensei Emily and Sensei Stefan. Our third video comes from Sensei Blaine Beamer. Blaine, Sensei Blaine began his training in Wadakai Karate in 1974 in Dundas, Ontario, under Sensei Alan Howell, and began training with Sensei Shintani in 1975. He founded karate clubs at Trent University in 1978, downtown Toronto in 1983, in Whistler in 1986, and Vancouver in 1987. He has been training at the Glen Morgan Club in Calgary, run by Sensei Kevin Bowes and Sensei John Eastley since 2004. Sensei Blaine holds the rank of 8th Dan. Welcome, Sensei Blaine. My name's Blaine Beamer. I uh, am originally from Southern Ontario, and I became a student of Mr. Shintani's back in 1975. I have a lot of fond memories of that. Uh, at that time, I think we were either uh, first at some reconditioned basement bowling alley on uh, Lower Barton Street, or were you at the Japanese Cultural Center? I also trained with him taking the bus for about two hours each way to go out to Stony Creek from Dundas. What do I remember of those times? I, I guess I remember that uh, uh, the marvelous way that Mr. Shintani had respect for everybody who was on the floor. And, you know, there were real stars and people who were extremely talented already, uh, people that I just dreamed I could be as good as. And then there's people who just enjoyed karate. Mr. Shintani had respect for them all. Uh, the thing I remember is that he is very much about the art. At that time, he had some old students or just past students who had gone into professional martial arts. He wasn't a big fan. Uh, they all had immense respect for him. Some of the luminaries of Canadian karate would show up, some of them still around. And it was clear that they saw something special in Mr. Shintani. And I think the group of us knew that this was a special opportunity to train with somebody who had really mastered this art. Uh, I remember training in, in the summer because I was away at university sometimes. Mr. Shintani came out one time. It was so hot and no air conditioning. Slapped me on the black and he just went, oh, it just laughed and walked away. That was kind of fun. It was so hot sometimes that we, sometimes nobody would show up for the class except me. Mr. Shintani didn't want to put on a gi. It was sweltering. So we'd just be in his office in Ontario and he loved talking about baseball. He was a semi-pro baseball player, I hear, and boxing. And his understanding of strategy generally was very impressive to me, how he, he really got that. I had the chance to sometimes do a little block encounter with Mr. Shintani. That made me realize how much I had to uh, improve to really stand a chance against a good opponent. And so that was a very humbling thing, but it also inspired me. Uh, I, when I went away to university, I was a blue belt. And after a couple of years, he said, uh, you know, you should start your own club. And I was just filled with uh, fear at the responsibility. So I tried to find a way out. I said, well, you know, I can't do that because I can't grade people. He said, oh, no, it's OK. I'll mail you the certificate. No way out. So I started a class that went for two years there. Uh, and the fact that he had that vote of confidence in me was immense. I also realized that I felt like I had something consequential to uh, that I'd been given and that I almost had a duty to sort of transmit the gift of the skills that, that I'd been given as imperfect as I knew them, right? So it was just a perfect blend of confidence and regard for what I was doing. Uh, Mr. Shintani, I trained with him uh, for years off and on. I did seminars with him all over the country. Now he's gone and a lot of people uh, feel badly that they didn't get a chance to train with him. I never worry about that because there are people, certainly people other than me who really understand the essence of what Mr. Shintani was transmitting. And I have nothing but confidence that they're just gonna continue there. I just want to thank Mr. Shintani and before him, my original instructor, Wado instructor, Mr. Howell, for uh, getting me started on a path where 
over almost 50 years now. Uh, I have had immense great fellowship and friendship with people all over. Uh, I love the fact that I can get together with people even now and they train with the same uh, sort of sense of satisfaction. I think we have something really precious. Karate is different than your average sport or enterprise. There's something consequential there. And I love training with people who have that respect for the same thing that I love and that has served me so well over the years. Thank you for the opportunity to address the group and uh, good luck at the tournament. Thank you, Sensei Blaine. Our next award and our last award is the Contributor Award, and it recognizes an individual who has truly made a difference to the SWKKF through their contributions to committees, governance, policy development, or financial sustainability in the SWKKF. These recipients' contributions have had an impact at the local and national level. The technical wizardry sees the creation of online registration, big screen promotion of tournament results, and many hours spent assembling on our SWKK family tree online. As one nominator wrote, he spends many weekends putting everything together to provide readers with a very impressive harmonizer. Often when things are almost done, another article comes in and things need to be rearranged. He just does it. Please join me in congratulating Sensi Yvon LaBelle as this year's Contributor Rewards recipient. Congratulations, Sensei Yvonne. All right, as these awards come to a close, I would like to thank Sensei Heather, Sensei Brad, and Sensei Blame uh, for sharing their memories of Sensei Shintani and our Wadokai Federation. Congratulations to the tournament organizers, especially Sensei Rod, Sensei Ann, Sensei Tom, Sensei Katrina, Sensei Karen, Sensei Jim, and Sensei Heather, as well as all the participants and winners. Thank you to Sensei Dennis for presenting these REACH Awards and to the well-deserving Karataka and thank you to all who took the time and effort to acknowledge and enter these nominations. There are so many within our organization who do great things. And I would like to acknowledge those who were also nominated in these categories for their outstanding contribution and hard work. Finally, I would like to thank Sensei Scott and Sensei Bernadine, who are our technical producers and make all things work in the background. Tonight was a wonderful celebration of all that is Sensei Shintani and the SWKKF. Congratulations again to all the winners. Thank you very much, Sensei uh, Beverly, for being our Master of Ceremony. And thank you all for participating in tonight's award. Have a good night and be safe.